While Black Lives Matter claims it wants to help blacks, it's promoting a radical agenda that would actually harm blacks more than help them. The group was founded on July 13th, 2013. The organization started out as a social media hashtag, hashtag Black Lives Matter. This was said to be a quote, response to state-sanctioned violence and anti-black racism. I never agreed with it for a number of reasons. One, I don't think there is state-sanctioned violence. It's very difficult to prove, even if you're going with, you know, how many police officers shoot and kill, quote-unquote, unarmed blacks every year. The number uh, has been in single digits for the last several years, and I'm saying black, unarmed black males that were shot and killed by police that didn't attempt to flee or attack the officers. So I think there's a, there's a disconnect based off of the data. There's no way that anybody could argue with any type of moral credibility that what we are experiencing today is identical or worse than what they grew up in in Jim Crow. There's just no comparison uh, by it. You know, in one generation, or let's say two generations, we went to blacks being subjugated as a people to electing and re-electing the first black pre president of a predominantly white nation. That's, not, that's never happened before. So to say that it's identical or worse um, undermines a certain level of credibility for the people who advocate that position. With the organization of its three co-founders, Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi, the organization has mushroomed into 40 chapters in multiple countries across the world and hundreds of millions of dollars in funding. The co-founders, with two identifying as queer, describe themselves as radical black organizers trying to, quote, affirm the lives of black, queer, and trans folks. My queerness, my blackness, my womanness uh, shaped Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter also openly promotes a Marxist ideology, and a 2015 interview with Patrice Cullors confirms it. We actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself, and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, are trained Marxists. Uh. BLM also holds up cop killer and fugitive Asada Shakur as their role model and inspiration, quoting her at every event. This is from our beloved Asada Shakur. It is our duty to win! It, it is, is our, our duty, duty to win! We must love and support one another! We, we must, must love and support, support one another! another. We have nothing to lose but our we have, we have nothing to lose but our chains. Ashay, Black Lives Matter. Black Woo! Lives Matter. Shakur was a Marxist revolutionary and a leader of the Black Liberation Army. After killing a police officer in 1977, she was convicted of first-degree murder along with seven other felonies and sentenced to prison before she fled to Cuba. She is just another shopper. She passes almost unnoticed by Cubans. Her name is Asada Shakur. She's on the FBI's most wanted terrorist list, and there's even a $2 million bounty on her head. BLM is fully endorsed by Communist Party USA, whose, quote, vision is one of Bill of Rights socialism in the USA. Black Lives Matter is also vehemently pro-abortion, so it's no surprise they've garnered the support of Planned Parenthood, which kills more than a third of a million babies every year. NARAL Pro-Choice America, the oldest and largest national organization promoting abortion, also supports BLM. Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Pete Buttigieg. All three were Democratic presidential candidates in 2020, and all three support abortion up to birth. They too shout the BLM mantra. Let's put that question to Senator Sanders. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. In 2016, BLM partnered with abortion groups to fight for black women. Alicia Garza, one of the three co-founders, confirmed that, quote, reproductive justice is very much situated within the Black Lives Matter movement. Their whole mission is summed up no better on their own website. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure. And so when they say they want to destroy what's left of the nuclear family, these are the same people who are arguing against state-sanctioned violence. These are the same people who are arguing about mass uh, incarceration of black males in prisons, and they're the same people that argue that there's a school-to-prison pipeline. But the data exists that says if you remove the, the black, if you destroy the black family, these things are going to get worse. 
So when they talk about these issues, they always talk about them. They start the story at the end. Blacks are disproportionately represented, represented in jails and prisons. Uh, there's a school to prison pipeline, but they don't look at the very beginning of the story and say, when you destroy the family, this is what happens. So if they want to reduce those numbers and reduce those negative disparities on the back end, they need to stop trying to destroy the family on the front end. And that's what Black Lives Matter is doing. And so they're actually working against themselves. If you think about it, if they want to reduce police brutality, one of the areas in which children learn respect for authority is in the nuclear family, particularly when there's a father there. Black Lives Matter is pro-gay, pro-trans, pro-Marxist, and pro-abortion. But such radical notions aren't necessarily widely supported by the black community. According to Pew Research, 51% of blacks in America support so-called same-sex marriage, a lower percentage than that of whites who support gay marriage by 62%. Blacks are also more conservative on the notion of gender, with 55% of black Democrats believing gender is determined by biological sex, while only 24% of white Democrats believe gender is biologically determined. On the topics of abortion and socialism, the numbers are a little higher, but again, don't show overwhelming support from the black community. According to the Public Religion Research Institute, only 58% of blacks support legalized abortion, if we don't take concern and care for our own children, if we ourselves demonstrate that black lives do not matter, particularly those who are defenseless, then it's going to be exceedingly difficult to try to convince people who aren't black that black lives matter. And so that there's another moral disconnect there. We have to prove to ourselves and our own communities that black lives matter. And that means reducing the number of abortions. And according to the Cato Institute, 62% of African Americans have a favorable view of socialism. But I think that that mentality over two generations, it started, that mindset is, is set in, in which you say the only way we're going to get ahead is if the government evens out the playing field. And I think that what that has done is that has put us further behind our multi-ethnic counterparts. And so what you end up trying to do is you don't give people equal protection under the law to go and try to control their own destinies and dictate their own lives. What you end up doing is trying to manufacture an equality of outcome. As of late, the Black Lives Matter movement has been endorsed by Catholic priests and even Catholic so-called charities. The CEO of their Eastern Washington branch saying, I am a racist. That's the hard truth. I am a racist. How could I not be? As a white person living in America, where every institution is geared to advantage people who look like me, it's seemingly impossible for me to be anything other than a racist. Catholic Charity supports Black Lives Matter. Self-described Catholic news outlets have also endorsed the mantra, some even saying that BLM can teach Catholics. So white people say, listen, we're not racist and we're gonna prove to you we're not racist. And they go through all of these type of humiliating acts of you know, self-degradation, uh, kneeling in front of the you know, black people, trying to wash their feet, saying that I am a racist, I renounce the privilege, I don't want to be an agent of, of white supremacy. And they all do that to try to capture this, this moral authority that they think that they don't have by virtue or by vice, excuse me, of being born white. It's ridiculous because it's condescending. All of these, 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 gestures of racial deference is really condescending to blacks because it's 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 treating blacks as if you can't engage with them one-on-one -on -one as equals in these things and two you have a bunch of white people apologizing for things that they did not do uh, to people who have never been victims of systemic or historical victimization so reports are saying the nba will write black lives matter on their courts Many players are agreeing to even wear the Marxist logo on their jerseys. In college football, the head football coach at the University of Memphis announced, quote, This season, for every game, our student-athletes' helmets will have a BLM sticker. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! In the NFL, plans to play the so-called Black National Anthem before every season opener are now underway although the response is overwhelming support for the Marxist push in American professional sports, some have spoken out in opposition. America has made them filthy rich and some of the most powerful people on the planet 
and they're unwilling to defend the values they built their business on and the country that has enriched them incredibly. Quote, we dismantle the patriarchal practice. We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement. So when I see that or as a mission statement for Black Lives Matter, it makes me scratch my head. This is cowardice at its highest level. This is the NFL jumping the shark and saying we quit being who we said we are. We're now something else because our money's on the line and we don't stand for the values we said we stood for. The children from the single parent homes, this is in 1995 I was reading this. Five times more likely to commit suicide. Six times more likely to be in poverty. Nine times more likely to drop out of high school. 10 times more likely to abuse chemical substances. 14 times more likely to commit rape. 20 times more likely to end up in prison. And 32 times more likely to run away from home. I knew that. You know why I knew it? Because a lot of my friends didn't have family structures that were nuclear like mine. While BLM is pro-gay, pro-trans, pro-Marxist, and pro-abortion, the Catholic Church condemns all four as intrinsically evil. The Catechism stating, Homosexual acts are intrinsically disordered and are contrary to the natural law. On gender, the Catechism states, By creating the human being, man and woman, God gives personal dignity equally to the one and the other. Each of them, man and woman, should acknowledge and accept his sexual identity. The Church has repeatedly condemned Marxism and Communism, Pope Pius IX referring to the wicked theories of this socialism and communism as perverted teachings, and Pope John XXIII adding that no Catholic could subscribe even to moderate socialism. And the Church has always been crystal clear on abortion as the killing of an innocent life. Since the first century, the church has affirmed the moral evil of every procured abortion. A lot of people don't know that the Black Lives Matter movement uh, is a thoroughly Marxist movement. They don't know that the founders of Black Lives Matter uh, are admittedly trained Marxists. They don't understand that Black Lives Matter wants to invert the ordination, the male-female separation that is communicated in Genesis. The fact that they, they love uh, they, they, they support trans lives, which goes directly against the idea that God created male and female in his own image. They stand against things that, that, that are diametrically opposed to thriving in Western civilization. I understand that you want to fight against racism, but take it from a biblical perspective. Take it from a traditionally Christian perspective, not from a secular Marxist perspective that stands diametrically opposed to the Christian worldview.